Hey, Mr. Joseph, good morning. Good morning. How you feeling today? Uh, good. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Joseph, if you can, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, your age, where you from? Um, 46, uh, originate from Levittown, where I was born. Okay. And, um, the, I was there till I was 20, and then I was in West Virginia. Okay. Um, as far as, uh, the, um, drug use goes, uh, when I was young, and I was in, uh, just at the end of the high school, uh, I ended up using, uh, ended up using heroin and, uh, had a bad bout with it. Um, had an overdose. Um, and, uh, after that, um, because of the use, is the decision I made. I ended up being incarcerated, yeah. in which place I, uh, at which time I did uh, just under about five years. Um, in there I advocated. I got education in college. One-on-one uh, -on -one professors and stuff. I just, I just. Wait, wait! You got education? Yeah. In what? Uh huh. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, the college of being uh, with people and yeah. and what they are and what they're like in prison and uh, the length of time and being able to see how people act and react in every situation possible because of the length of time that I was in there. And uh, but uh, not only that, but uh, Bluefield University at the bottom of West Virginia supplied my schooling. <laughs> And uh, some people from West Virginia University came down, and it was one-on-one. -on -one, so that's actually pretty privileged to have one-on-one -on -one schooling with the professors. And uh, yeah, and uh, I was advocating to try and get a reconstructed center with the motorcycles. <laughs> but uh, loud city man, loud city. Yeah, yeah loud city. Um, so how was like you know, how was your childhood? Childhood was great. Uh, I grew up. My father was a uh, a major hunter, uh, big time hunter. My father was a, you know, an incredible hunter and uh, very outdoors, and uh, he taught me. Uh, so archery was very profound to us, and uh, wow, so and ar archery hunting. And, so uh, you basically hunted on the archery tip, right? Well, it was like a rite of passage with my father. That's where how we spent time, and uh, you know, my father was incredible. Um, he passed this past year, oh, man. but. Um, yeah, there was nothing that would lead me to using that they did or transpired or nothing that I would ever even give an inkling to. Um, it's just as far as like once you do it and once you use it, uh, it gets into your, you know, your brain and it's, it's almost like anhedonia, they call it. It's where your brain gets altered from using the opiates. Mm -hmm. And then it always kind of just chimes into your head. Um, if you should have moments of weakness, this and that, the addiction just stays and resonates in your, you know, in your brain. But um, I'd work through it. It's all about, you know, you gotta get into a program. You gotta end up, you gotta love yourself. You gotta appreciate yourself. And, you know, you gotta look in the mirror every day and talk to that guy, because you're gonna need him the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, you, you gotta take care of yourself and look out the best you can, uh, the same as you would as someone that you love. Um, I had a bouts of sobriety that were going for, you know, years at a time, but it would seem that I would circle back and you lose it all over again. And just to rebuild yourself, it's very, uh, it's very arduous, man. It's a, uh, you really go through it. There's a lot of emotions, you know, from beating yourself down and building yourself back up, but to, uh, refine, you know, a light in life that you, you know, you love life so much. For me, I do, you know, I love people and you know, I love networking with people. Um, and through my life, I loved hunting. I continued to hunt. Uh, I became an archery instructor in my uh, late 20s. <clears throat> and you're an uh, archery instructor as well? Yeah. I might need some lessons, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> my whole life, I was into music, playing guitar. <clears throat> um, I just, I got into singing in the past. I always sung, but I was like on the back. I was like kind of hiding it, just singing to myself. But I got... You know, you got any music out there? Or, huh? You got any music on? No, I'm gonna set up a a um, internet platform and uh, do a nice launch, and that's gonna be my way to talk to people, kind of let them know about my downs, my ups, and how music can uh, change your life. And what the how reason. What's your name again? Is it uh, jo Joseph, Joseph Sex Sexton? Joseph Sexton. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yo, Joe, man. Get that, you know, down packed with the platform, man. Reach yeah. out to me. Yeah, um, I just recently, uh, I mean, I'm going into treatment. 
Uh, I got a lot of support um, here from the city. And uh, I love to hear it. believe it or not, to what people would say or contrary to their beliefs, there's an incredible amount of love here in the city. It's just the people that you surround yourself with. And uh, you just got to kind of set boundaries. You got to know not to uh, run to a needle um, when your emotions are getting to you and other things might be uh, getting to you, you, you can't give up. Uh, mainly you got to find the support and the people that are there for you because there's an abundance of them. And it's not easy, but uh, some people use a 12-step program. Um, 12-step program, is, it's been good to me. And you got to, you got to, uh, and you got to utilize it and incorporate it into your life. And uh, you got to you got to be on your own with things. You can't expect others to be with you and get you know get clean for them. You, you got to find your own way. And uh, one hang-up I've always had is I end up uh, you know wanting to help another person or like you know I stick around with them too much and uh, it pulls me back in. You know you got to. You've really got to fight for your life, and that's what it is, because if you stay in it, especially these days with everything switching to Trank, I never knew nothing about these things. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got a hand injury now. I mean, with being a music... from the Trank? Yeah, because yeah, wow. the Trank's not bioavailable to your body or human beings. Can so, you repeat uh, that, what the Trank does? Um, <clears throat> the Trank doesn't have nowhere to go in your body because it's not meant for human beings. And if you're injecting it and you're putting it into your blood, it really has nowhere to go because it's meant for muscle tissue. Um, so when it goes, it goes to search out a place to get out of your body. And what it does is it becomes just like an acid and it burns through. So they're called trank burns. And it's inevitable that it's going to happen. Nobody gets by without it. Uh, people who you know ingest it differently, smoke it or snort it, um, it'll find its way because it'll build up in your body. Joseph, I gotta tell you, you're the first person on this platform that broke down using trick, uh, horse tranquilizer to a T, man. Yeah. And people just say little things here and there, but they don't really know what to say about this substance. You're yeah. the first person that really broke this down yeah. to a T. I mean, if you ask me, if it has no, no place being in the human body, and dealers are so readily available just pumping it out there and it and without a doubt 100 percent you're gonna end up in the hospital you're gonna end up with trank burns um people when the trank burns start to come out people are going to alienate you because it's horrible looking uh, you know the the way the trank treats your body it breaks you down and uh you know it's painful so once people get into the arena of where you know they have trank burns that you know they look like you know, they don't look well at all, and people are alienating them, their family's not talking to them, then they just invest all their time. Like, people move down here, and they become homeless, and they use constantly 24-7, and they get away from their humanity. They're not doing the things that they usually would, They're not listening to music, or, you know, doing the things that they love, and uh, they just start to feel worse and worse, and the alienation just gets to them more and more. Um, I me, mean, I always try and look on the light side of life with the sun and the moon and uh, just kind of have appreciation and gratitude for the people that are, you know, that are here. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy, but you know what, there's, uh, there's people out here and people like me, you know, or like who, who understand and appreciate. There's these people, um, Hope on Deck, right here, it says Ma Van. And they're incredible people. And Dawn, the woman who comes around with her truck and gives out food okay. and medical help. Uh, and the Dawn. Yeah, <laughs> man. And, uh, yeah, uh, Dawn's incredible. And uh, her people are incredible. And uh, she's, uh, she said she'd help support me um, with going into treatment. And she'd be there yeah, we got support bef system before, there. during, and after. Yeah, it's extremely important. <clears throat> and uh, that appreciation's out there, and uh, you just got to surround yourself with the right people. You know, people... Joseph, let's talk about it, man. You did some jail time. You said five years? Yeah, just on How was your jail stint? And where, were, where were you locked down at? Was it uh, prison or...? West Virginia. Okay. And uh, I was in Morgantown. I was 20 years old. Okay. And, uh, yeah, things got real, real quick. Yeah. But, um... I mean, to be honest, my time was incredible. It was probably one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah. 
um, because it, uh, it showed me who I am, what I'm capable of, and what I can do, and it showed me that, you know, I'm unique in my ways, and it showed me that I love people and love to help, so yeah. while in there, you know, helping people, you know, learn how to read and write, and, uh, you know, helping them uh, get re in touch with their families, you know, getting healthy, uh, just helping people spend the time beneficially and look forward to getting jobs when they get out. So, um, so it was like a learning, it was like a, a oh, learning extremely, experience. A learning experience and you know you got to take what's in there and you got to turn it into a positive. Um, for a long time when I got out I was, I was resilient but um, I got complacent and started using again. And you it, was using inside the jail? Or? No, oh, no, not at all. You got out after you got out? Yeah, I got out, I was complacent and I had a settlement and uh, I ran into a lot of trouble, a friend died. and. Um, yeah, so there's some more jail time, just little bits here and there. But uh, like I said, I eventually got it together and the help of my mother never giving up on me and taking me in. Shout know. out to moms. <laughs> yeah, she's not with me no more, but she's with me more than ever, you know. You know, Patricia is that, you know, the most amazing woman in the world. You know. Absolutely. And, um, you lost her as well? Yeah, I'm yeah, this past year. My stepbrother had an overdose. Um, you know what, it's all about the love. When it comes down to it, it's all about the love, everything. And you know, and respect is love. You know, so to give someone respect, respect, res respect is the promise of the attendance of 100% love and outlook through all events and affairs, through the apprehension of anything you deal with. And it just means to take consideration and, uh, you know, don't overlook things, don't blow them out of the water, look at them for what they are and deal with them for that, you know, so being disrespectful means showing a lack of love, if you think about it. And, uh, yeah, just have appreciation, you know, uh, help the world stay positive and understand that everybody's a human being. And, uh, What's your religion? I'm sorry to cut you off, Joseph. Um, What's your uh, religion aspect? <clears throat> I, I keep it, I, uh, you know, I worship the sun and the moon and, you know, nature, how the world turns, okay. um, energy and, uh, Appreciation. Use your, uh, you know, use your emotions and realize that they're vibes. And uh, music has such a powerful uh, effect in uh, to carry you up or to help you get down, or reach out, and be heard. So, uh, you know, hopefully, I get some music out there and uh, people can enjoy it. You know, it's what I love to do. It's a passion. What genre are you on? Like, what path of music are you working yeah. with right now? Any and everything, you know, I mean, yeah, I can do classic rock, you know, all right. like alternative sound, and, but, uh, I mean, uh, I really wouldn't know, I guess other people would have to tell me, because I don't know how to decipher, the, you know, uh, minutely uh, what genre it is, but I, I would say, I would say, you know, uh, you know, rock, you know, it's, I mean, it covers a lot of genres, but uh, I like everything, R&B, classic. Yeah, yeah, a great see. friend of mine, uh, his name is Tad at Shiz, he has a channel, and he did a, um, he did a music review on Metall Metallic, Metallica, Metallica, yeah, and it blew up, yeah. it hit like 30k in like first month. That's cool. Yeah, man. Well, they're very well known, I mean, they've been around so long, and they, you know, so, yeah, I don't knock them at all, uh, I mean, they've done a lot for, you know, themselves and people. So I am gonna ask you where, I, where you see yourself in the next six months, cause you ready to go get clean. You ready, yeah. you know. Um, but um, what substance are you dealing with at the moment? We haven't gotten to that. Trank, okay. uh, using the trank and fentanyl. Trank and fentanyl. And uh, I use it as little as possible, but um, it's so strong and everything. I mean, uh, you know, a little's too much, you know, and yeah. you know, a lot's <laughs> a hell of a lot, hell of a more lot. than you need to be doing. But uh. Is for anybody that you know is trying to you know get through it. You're gonna you, you can't do it yourself, you know. And there's plenty of good people out there to help you. And uh, yeah, don't blame. I would say don't blame Philadelphia. They're just like you know they're just on their heels and don't know what to do. Um, basically, it's up to us. We're all adults in uh, in this, and there is people that aren't adults yet involved in it. But uh, you know, just reach out and try and become a better person, and just know that there's support in every direction. All right, Joseph, last name, what's the last, what you say? Sexton. Joseph Sexton, is that your music name too? Mm -hmm. It'll probably be in there somewhere. Okay, uh, yeah. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I want to appreciate you for having the courage to speak out. It's not everybody 
can't do this, you know? Yeah. I know it takes a lot. It takes a lot of pride. It takes a lot of stuff to be able to do this. Yeah, because I'm a little beat down right now, you know what I mean? But it's all about, you know, being honest. It's an honest program, and, uh, you know, it's a real thing. You know, it's affecting every family out there in one way or another, and people are disappearing. But uh, I think everybody needs to just try and, if everybody can just try one grain of sand more of effort to be a human being every day, pretty soon we'll all be at the beach, you know? Absolutely. Oh, man, your, your spiritual mindset is just at, at a high level, sir. Thank you, man. Once again, my name is ATM Ray with All Time Media. We give a voice out to the voices. Blessings to you, man. Hey, thanks for your time, boss. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.